Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel where we talk about skincare, grooming and sometimes hair so if that sounds like the thing, make sure you are subscribed. Also, come and follow me on Instagram where I post a lot of stuff you're not gonna see here on YouTube. Today's video is based on mine and my brother's podcast, sorry, number one podcast. It was number one in fashion and beauty for a couple of weeks. We, we're chopping and changing. Our podcast is called The Double Cleanse Podcast where we talk about skincare, makeup, and kind of like behind the scenes of the influencer world. It's interesting, you should go listen. We're on Spotify, we're on Podbean, we're on um, the Apple's podcast app. I will link everything down below, but today's episode is called Perfecting Pause. I just kind of wanted to um, extend on that podcast episode here on my YouTube channel. I want to share a bit more detail on what I do personally to look after my pores, keep them nice and tight looking, clear looking, and basically to prevent them from ever hopefully getting bigger. And with this video, I think I kind of want to put my final say on pores. I made quite a few videos on like how to get rid of them, flawless, poreless skin, when really it's not about trying to remove anything from your face or make anything flawless or perfect. And also removing pores is impossible, but I wanted to kind of just talk about, um, and the reason we call the podcast Perfecting Pores is because it's not about how to get rid of them, but how to look after them. Keep your skin happy and in return, your skin's gonna look happy as well. And that includes the size and appearance of our pores. Usual disclaimer, this is my personal experience. I'm coming at you with a skincare enthusiast, consumer level review and opinion on products and how I personally look after my pores and reduce the appearance of those pores. I'm not professional. So what are pores? Pores are basically hair follicles. They contain a little gland called the sebaceous gland and it's their job to create that oil and sebum that um, basically comes out of the pores and looks after our skin, keeping it happy and healthy, supple, moisturized and young. So they have a really important job and we need them. We want them to be on our face. If we don't look after these pores, they can of course get clogged, leading to whiteheads, blackheads and acne and they can just look bigger on our face as well. So our goal is to really keep them from clogging and prevent them from looking bigger. So what can contribute to a bigger looking pore? It's down to a few things. Genetics can probably be like the main one. Some people just have naturally larger pores. Something else that might be contributing to larger looking pores is if like me, you might have very oily skin, especially in the T-zone. And our sebaceous glands may just be creating more oil. Another thing that contributes heavily to enlarged pores is of course a loss of elastin around the pore. As we age, like all good things in our skin, we tend to lose this. This. And also sun damage can be a big factor of breaking down elastin and collagen in our skin. So let's run through what we can do to prevent larger looking pores. And if you do already have large pores, pores that look clogged, here's what I personally like to do. I just want to note, cleansing is super important. Obviously for me, a double cleanse is important to remove um, oils, sunscreen, pollution, whatever's been on our face throughout the day. If you don't wear makeup, if you don't wear sunscreen, if you don't wear sunscreen, you need to, but if you don't, you don't need to double cleanse. But sometimes if you do get really sweaty and oily, it's nice to have a double cleanse. And most people will benefit from a double cleanse, but it's not a must do, I repeat. It's not a must if you don't wear makeup or sunscreen. But what I want to talk about the cleanse is that during winter, I don't do a cleanse in the morning. I just splash my face. My skin is already kind of like void of moisture and hydration. So I don't want to be adding water to that and cleansing away any oils that my skin is kind of trying to grip to. I find that in the winter, if I cleanse too much, if, I, if I'm over drying my skin, my skin looks drier and my pores look bigger. This is the opposite in summer, however. In summer, I always do my usual evening routine, but obviously because it's hotter and it's more humid, you can wake up a little bit sweaty, a little bit more oily. So in the summer, on those really, really hot days, I cleanse morning and night. I want to get off all that excess product, all that oil, all that sweat off my skin. That, if not washed away in the morning, for me, leads to breakouts. So cleansing twice a day in summer, still with a gentle cleanser. One cleanse in the morning, double cleanse in the evening, keeps my pores looking happy, keeps them looking not congested, prevents blackheads, breakouts, uh, acne. So let's talk about BHA. I get asked this question a lot if if exfoliating is good for your pores, can I just use a physical exfoliator? Not really. Physical exfoliators don't really do anything for get, like getting into the pores. Physical exfoliators do a great job at exfoliating the top layer of your skin. However, we want to get into those pores. And that's where salicylic acid, BHAs come in. They're oil soluble so they can get into the pore and basically clear them out. AHAs are water soluble. They're still a good chemical exfoliator, but they're really for the top layer of your skin. To put it very, very 
very, very simply, BHAs can dissolve what's in your pores, what's clogging our pores and potentially making them look bigger as well as preventing blockages in the future. So this and everything I'm gonna talk about is long-term results and things that you should continue to do, not just when you see your face is looking congested or you have blackheads or your pores are looking big. We all know I love Pores Choice BHA. It's a good standard get the job done BHA. More recently, I've been loving Glow Recipes, Watermelon and Glow PHA and BHA. It's a very weird product in the best way. It's got this thick, full fat water, as I always say, consistent consistency to it, which means you can put some of the product onto the palm of your hands, pat that into your skin, it doesn't drip down your face into your eyes, and unlike other typical BHAs I use, this has a really hydrating property to it that gives you a glow of um, plumpness and hydration after, not just a freshly exfoliated glow. You do tend to get a bit of dryness with salicylic acid, but this doesn't happen with the glow recipe one. It's, it's, it's very nice. <laughs> Nine and the cinnamide we have to talk about. If you get that joke, you get that joke. Of course, there's a few reasons I use niacinamide. Niacinamide has been shown to help your skin barrier function properly. And as we age, we need a little bit of help with our skin barrier. You know, as we age, everything needs a little bit of help. And as we help our skin barrier, the more hydration it retains. And moisture, and having nice moisturized skin, balanced skin, keeps our pores from clogging. Niacinamide is also thought to help the production of collagen, therefore improving the skin's elasticity. All factors we need to keep our, our pores looking tight. Niacinamide also helps with oil and sebum control, and th this is the main reason I use it. If, like me, you get a very oily nose, basically a very oily T-zone, your pores can appear much larger on those areas. I know for me, my nose just looks like a crater full of pores. In fact, they're pretty much more prominent there for everyone, but for people with oily skin, the oils can kind of make, like, make it look like we've highlighted our pores. So using niacinamide can actually help slow down that sebum production or regulate that sebum production. And it's that excessive sebum and oil production that can clog up our pores, leading to blackheads, whiteheads, breakouts, etc. Larger looking pores. These are some of my favorite niacinamide products. Of course, we have the Ordinary's niacinamide. Be careful with niacinamide because although it's quite gentle, niacinamide does pop up in a lot of skincare recently. So just make sure you're not already using it. More recently, I have been loving the Naturium Niacinamide and Zinc Serum. I use this twice a day. It's a step up for me from the Ordinary's Niacinamide. How much is it? Here we go. It's 12% um, plus zinc, 2%. Again, this is great for regulating for me that sebum production and to help care for my skin barrier as well. Let's talk about retinol, here we go. I got a retinol booster here. Retinol can help your pores by kind of acting very similar to a chemical exfoliator. They can help with cell turnover, resurfacing the skin, de-clogging pores, obviously amongst the other amazing things that retinol can do for your skin, including fine lines, wrinkles, all that kind of stuff. Again, as I mentioned, I'm just using the Paula's Choice 1% uh, retinol booster. Moisturizing, now moisturizing is super important. I think a lot of people relate moisturizing to like um, heavy heaviness and clogging of the pores. But especially if you're oily, we want to moisturize. Especially if you're dry, we want to moisturize. But we do have that feeling like if you're oily that removing sebum from our skin is the wrong thing to do. But moisturize can actually help against excessive sebum production from lack of moisture, which then can of course lead to clogged pores that do look enlarged. So you're actually not doing yourself any favors by not moisturizing, whether you're oily or whether you're dry. Of course, it's gonna help your skin barrier do whatever it needs to do, keep it working, keep it healthy. A weak or damaged skin barrier can lead to very, very easily irritated skin. Inflammation, redness, and for me, I know my skin barrier is damaged when products that I can usually use without any problem are starting to hurt, like basically irritate my skin. If you have oily skin, gel moisturizers are great to use. They're often hydrating for those with very, very oily skin, but enough to not dry down our skin. Obviously those with drier skin can opt for heavier moisturizers, oily moisturizers. For the daytime, these are my current favorites. And for the evening, I use something a little heavier as I'm not layering up with sunscreen. Speaking of sunscreen, sunscreen is so, so important when it comes to, of course, skin in general, but also making your pores look smaller and preventing future enlarged pores. Sun damage is a little bitch, we all know that. It literally, it, it's out to destroy our skin. 
and the sun keeps us alive, but mainly it wants to destroy our skin. Constant exposure to the sun can of course dry out our skin. It can break down collagen, which our skin is already struggling with as we get older. The same with elastin. Both two extremely important factors in making our skin look plumper, firmer, and making those pores appear smaller. In my opinion, just make a habit of wearing sunscreen every day. I know a lot of people don't like to use it, but if you at least use it once a day and then build up on that, it just becomes a daily habit. And whether you're outside or not, it just becomes a habit. I know skincare can be confusing. There's a lot of varying opinions amongst professionals who we all look to for advice, but the one thing they all agree with is that sunscreen is the most important skincare product you can use. So please just wear it. Oh, that's it. Okay, I'm done. I feel like there's more. I'm just gonna talk about this quick, but things I would avoid for pores are instant fixes like nose pore strips, extractions, extracting your own gunk from pores if they look large. These long-term results are far better um, than those quick fixes, which are literally gonna fix it for like a day and then you just have the problem over and over and over. With these products, with everything I mentioned, probably within about two to three, four months maximum, you will start seeing a permanent difference within your skin and your pores. I really hope this helped. I tried to put that all as simply as possible. There's no magic cure, there's no magic fix. These are just things that have been proven to work and help. And if you stick with it and stick to it, and if you use these products as of when they need to be used, you, you really will start seeing results. So I hope that was interesting. I hope that wasn't like too like blase. Please go listen to our podcast, me and my brother, Robert Welsh, who if you're not already subscribed, to go and subscribe to him he's a makeup artist yeah we just talk about stuff including pores today so if you do want to know a little bit more about how to wear makeup with pores and not highlight your pores for example go and listen to that podcast where it has some very very interesting facts i don't know i don't know what i'm saying other stuff he knows his makeup go listen to it again i'll leave all the links down below but that's it from me now guys i will see you next time